Hi, I'm Connie Knox, a lifelong genealogist. Have you ever wondered where your family originated? How far back can you go with your family history? Have you ever wanted to do research on your ancestors but didn't know where to start? Well, you're in the right place. I'm here to help you get started quick and easy with a few simple steps, and we're going to get started right now. Here's a family history kickstart guide. Here's what you need to know. Start backwards. Start with yourself and work backwards to your parents, your grandparents, and so on with as much information as you know. Don't skip a generation until you've documented everything you know on each person. So what do you collect? Full names, nicknames, as much as you know. You're looking for vital statistics, birth, marriage, death, and divorce records. You want to discover dates and places, including counties, for every event. For example, let's say it's Jane Doe and she was born in the city of Los Angeles and Los Angeles County, California on the 12th of March in 1930. So you'll want to write the dates like this, 12 March 1930 or Mar, we usually use a three character uh, shortened month for most of the data fields in your uh, software. So you'll want to use like MAR for March or APR for April. This way there's no confusion on dates. Military records, photos, uniforms, medals, buttons, all of that can be helpful clues to your family research. Church records, information including dates and events, as much as you can find on christenings, marriages, funerals, etc. are often found in the church records. You need a source for every fact that you find. So you're going to want to collect that information and write it down for every fact you find because 10 years from now when you're looking back at it again you're going to want to know where that evidence came from and believe me I've been there you'll thank me for that tip a decade from now. You'll want to interview your elders as soon as possible and whenever you can record the video or audio of the conversation and take notes. Don't rely on the recordings. They fail sometimes. Turn off the TV and get in a quiet place where you can have a conversation with your elders about your family history. Use pedigree charts, family group sheets to inspire elders to help fill in the blanks during the interviews. Free copies can be downloaded from the Family Search or Ancestry websites. I like to take the forms and family group sheets and ancestry charts with me, but sometimes I'll record it right into the software while I'm talking to the family. Keep track electronically in online resources like Ancestry.com or FamilySearch.org. Consider purchasing a family tree software like Family Tree Maker or Roots Magic. If you feel computer savvy, keep notes interconnected to all of your devices on things like Google Docs or electronic notebooks, Evernote, OneNote. That way you can cross from one device to another. Label old photographs. Write down names in pencil on the back of the unlabeled photos as soon as you talk to your elders. Take time to do this. Memories fade over time. In family group pictures, make a copy and number every person in the photograph and then write down their names, as many as you know, and then ask elders to help you identify some of those people. Do it now before names are forgotten. Take pictures of, of family members and heirlooms. Take pictures during the interview process. Pictures will help you tell the story later in whatever form you choose. Consider bringing a DNA test, but get permission from them in advance before you make a visit. Make sure you get them to take the test while you visit. Don't leave it behind. It'll never get done. Trust me. Getting a DNA test on your eldest members first is very important in genealogy today. Review and polish your notes immediately after the interview, before the memories fade. Copy and archive information you collect in at least two different locations, not the same house. I recommend your computer and a cloud storage such as Dropbox, CrashPlan, or similar. Stay organized. Keep your physical documents in folders and notebooks. Organized by surname and place. Keep your electronic files organized by surname at birth within the folders 
then you can keep your documents in the same way, such as uh, surname in all caps with a first and middle name to follow. For example, I have here a Henley folder. Then in the Henley folder, I have Mary Jane. So it would be Henley folder, then followed by a folder for Henley, Mary Jane. And then a f inside that folder, you have Henley, Mary Jane, and birth certificate, 1932. This way, you can find everything really fast. By organizing in this way, all of your documents are in one place and is easy to see. Keep your written research notes in chronological order. This is huge and gives you perspective on what you're missing, what you've already looked for, and an ancestor's timeline all in one document. This will be a working document that is always being updated. Take time to add the source citations to each event in your research notes as you go so that you know where you got the information. I use footnotes for keeping sources so that my document reads simply as a timeline and not cluttered with source information. You're off and running. These tips alone are a great start. Now go find your ancestors. If you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up or give me comments below. Also, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and don't forget to ring the bell so that you'll get notified the next time we upload videos. Also, if you're researching in North Carolina, I've got a website devoted to North Carolina researchers at ncancestry.com. Until next time, we'll see you climbing the family tree. Do no, we have right? some lines that we could say? Is that a script for us?